Thanks, Ria. Well, good morning to all of you. My role and responsibility is to report as rapporteur as to what happened yesterday. So wasn't it wonderful to have 22 nations from being represented by 22 countries uh, from every inhabited continent of the world, North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia. The advantage is that you learn a lot about different countries, countries you would not normally meet. Then we were discussing the political situation in New Zealand with Peter, and he said, do you know that in New Zealand we have, at one time we had 3 million people and 60 million sheep, which is why we don't allow our sheep to vote. <laughs> it was, like Raj Mohan said, a stirring start to the inauguration yesterday. There was hardly anyone in the room who was not moved after watching the national anthem being sung by those very special children. We had then the privilege of hearing Mr. Pramad Kumar, our former cabinet secretary, and the founder and one of the movers of the IC Center for Governance. He started off with a very deep thought that democracy is based on the faith in the goodness of man. And he went on to say that this faith is being put to challenge and that a, that a large part of democracy is without freedom. He gave the example of India that over 65 years of democracy and the needs of the people are yet not fulfilled. And he made four very thought-provoking statements. The poor cannot eat democracy. Democracy is not a guarantee for welfare. Democracy must deliver. And he said that some totalitarian regimes take care of their people better than a democracy. Mm. Now, sir, I can fully understand and identify with that last statement. At home, I live in a totalitarian regime, and I'm very well taken care of. <laughs> and he gave some very revealing statistics. That out of 167 countries in the world which are a democracy, only 26 have passed the test of being a full democracy. <coughs> What that means is that 85% of the democratic world has a flawed democracy. And he went on to say that for a full democracy, we need the required and the collective action of civil society. And this reminds me of what J. Edgar had said, that when morals decline and good men do nothing, evil flourishes. So the full and total involvement of civil society is extremely necessary for a full democracy to work. He made a compelling case when he said that institutions of democracy are central to human development. And he said two things which caught my attention. He said larger than the institutions is the functioning of the institutions. They must function. And when institutions fail, people, he said, lose faith. The restlessness in society then leads to spontaneity and spontaneous action by civil society and he reminded us of the Arab Spring, Occupy Wall Street, and the India Against Corruption movement. But he also did mention in his talk that the good news is that there are more democracies in the world now than ever before. After that, many of you shared some of your thoughts, hopes, and aspirations from this dialogue. And when Sally from Australia spoke about democracy beginning at home, I was reminded of Osong Suu Kyi's message which she had specially sent for our first democracy dialogue and she said exactly the same thing, that democracy must first begin in our families. So Sally, thank you very much for drawing that extremely important connection between our families and democracy. Yesterday we had the privilege of seeing a movie, a series of five made by the granddaughter of Walt Disney. And the theme is that if power is given to women, there will be no war. And we were having a discussion on the role of women and the importance of women in positions of power and in society. And being an international conference, I was treated to the Brazilian perspective on this. Where our friend from Brazil said that, you know, my mother says and always says that in a marriage there are two people. 
One of them is a man, and the other one is always right. <laughs> it's always a pleasure and inspiration listening to Raj Mohan Gandhi. He said that democracy is feeble, yet it has survived. In spite of all the fault lines India has had, we have survived, survived in spite of the diversity, and he posed this question to us. That how is it that democracy has survived in spite of the diversity we see? And he left us with three pearls of wisdom and advice. Use this opportunity to get to know each other. Deeply listen to each other and get inspired by those around you. Mm. I think one of the biggest inspirations for us is the impact the first democracy dialogue has had on the Vice President of South Sudan. He was here last year with his wife and a delegation and something stirred in him, something triggered off a thought process in him over here, as even Mr. Prabhat Kumar mentioned in his opening talk, which has led to a series of events and now we find that IRC and the ICCFG, the Center for Governance, is working in partnership with the government of the Republic of South Sudan to build and strengthen the democratic institutions. Such is the power of this dialogue. And I hope and pray that over the next few days, with an inspired frame of mind, we find it in ourselves to take on bigger and bolder initiatives to make a change out there in the world. May I now invite Mr. Rajmohan Gandhi to lead us to what I know will be a very interesting and inspiring first plenary session.